Okay. In this video, we will look at functions. Functions are important in, in programming to manage your code. Sometimes you have a large code and you, you will find challenge managing this code and also it helps you to reuse your code. So we'll try to achieve three objectives. One is you understand why we need function and when we use the function, then we create a function, and then we will use those functions to, to perform different uh, operations. User-defined functions are functions that created by the user. There are so many functions already built in Python. We have seen a number of them so far. We have seen forward, we have seen left, we have seen import, we have seen color, we have seen many of them. These are already in Python or in a library created by Python or other languages that can work with, with Python. Now we're talking about user-defined functions that the user will create. And here we're talking about those uh, functions. So it's a part of your code. And instead of having your code all written in uh, one uh, block, you start dividing it into smaller components. Why you need to do that? I said, we need to manage this large code. But the other important component is the re reusability of your code. So if you want to use a code multiple times, you don't need to write it again and again. You just write it once and use it as much as you would like uh, 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 to do. So it is a self-contained computer code that performs specific task or process or operation uh, for, for you. Sometime we heard the word method, we have procedure, we have so many names. These are the same uh, functions, methods, procedures are all the same, so you don't get confused about, about them. They are all the same. Now, if you want to decompose your code and create it in smaller functions, functions is the one you can use. So function is an implementation of decomposition, which we talk about it before, in one way or another. Type of function, there are four types of functions. You can think of functions like a box that sometime you don't know what is inside the box, or maybe you know, but you input something to the box and you see the output. Now, there are functions that accepts input and return no outcome. Like what? Like for example, uh, if you look at forward, which we have seen, forward takes a number and produce for you a square, but it doesn't give you back any value. It will just display something on the screen for you. There are other functions that uh, does not take any, uh, any input. Uh, and return nothing. So they just perform their own operations, uh, which uh, uh, can be uh, a process that calling another function or doing something, something else. And there are functions that accept some values and return uh, some results at the end. So looking at it, function that doesn't accept any variables and return nothing. Function that accept variable and do some process but return nothing. And function that does not accept but it return uh, a value. And function that accept and returns. Now this looks a little bit complicated, but by looking at the examples, you will understand it uh, and it will become clear. So now how we can create a function? user-defined function. In Python, the keyword again, def, def, is used to define the function or create the function. So every user-defined function should start by def. And then a function name. Again, this function name follow the same rules as the variable uh, name. So you cannot have space, you cannot have uh, starting by number and things like that. And then it will have a bracket, and then start here your variables, if it accepts variables. 
this example here it takes variable 1 and variable 2 and and more the function must end by a colon this colon indicates this is the end of the function you have seen before the example of for loop for loop ends by a colon this is the same you need to have a colon at the end to say this is the end of the line that define the function and then comes the body of the function again as i said when you name your function you cannot have a space for example you cannot call function space one or you should start by a diff uh, keyword which we already spoke about it and there are specific characters you cannot you cannot uh, use and uh, and there are many other similar to the variable which uh, restrict you from coming with a function name that create confusion to the program code and confusion comes from using special characters which already reserved for the programming language or having a space in, in, the, in the function name or things uh, like that. You will understand this more by practice. When you practice, you make a mistake, you will find issues, you will find problem. Then you will solve it and you will understand how it works. The bracket is important, as you said, uh, to say this is the function and, and the parameters are included within the bracket. And if the function is returning a value, there is a keyword need to be in the body, in the right place, called return. We will see that uh, at the end. Now the code you will, that is the code that is part of your function should be indented to the right, similar to what you see in the for loop. So it will start under the F letter of the uh, def. We will see now some examples, you will become more familiar with that. Now let's draw a square that receive a parameter called L or variable called L and the L is the length of that square. So based on that, it draws the square. If you give it 100, it will draw a square with 100. If you give it 200, it will draw, draw a square with 200. So we declare the function here by saying def space square. So the space between def and the name of the function is important. If you don't have space, then it will be considered um, wrong. So the function name is square, it receiving a parameter called L or variable called L, and we have the colon at the end of that line. So that's the function definition. Where is the body of the function? The components of the function is the lines after that. So the line after that moved to the right a little bit and started doing the normal thing we have done before, like moving forward, changing by 90 degrees and continuing. So this is a function called square. We created, we could have given it any name. I uh, could have used any name for that. I could have used square with S uppercase or anything else. And this is the, the function. Now you have created the function. Creating the function is one thing and calling it or using it is another thing. So if I want to use that function, how I can use the function? I just need the name of that function, then bracket, and pass the values that required by the function. We know this function need one value for one variable called L. So if I say square 100, so this will pass it to the function, and it will draw a square with a length of 100 pixels. One important thing you noticed, the def, def, and square, the s of square, they are all on the same vertical line. Why? Because they are at the same level. The square here, which we did call, is not part of the function. It's outside the function. And this is a mistake you will make is you will maybe have the square indented to the right. If you do it indented to the right, it will not work the way you want it to do, but it will do something more interesting in programming, which is not the subject of, of our uh, uh, course now. So this will draw a square 
of a length 100. If I replace that 100 with 200, it will draw a different square. So we created a function and we did call it. Now that QR code on the top, if you scan it, uh, you will get to the live code on Ripple and you can uh, work uh, on that live code. Another example, now we've seen one variable, that's L. Now if that square we want to change it and make it has length and width, so we can have control on both of them. So we can just change that function, we'll give it a new name, rectangular or rectangular, and then we'll have L comma W, these are the two variables, and we change in the code. So one forward will be for W, the next forward will be for L, yeah, because you want to get the shape, and then when we call it, the line 12, we need to uh, supply two things. One value for L, one value for W. And we should have a comma in between. And this will draw this square, which you see on, on the screen, or rectangular on, on the screen. And this is a function that accepts uh, two parameters. And you can scan the QR code, and you get to the live code uh, on, on Ripple. A third example, let's do now some calculation. So we know the length and width. How we can calculate the area? Uh, area is simple for this example. It's just length multiplied width. So how we do that? In line 11, after we draw, after, after we have uh, uh, the, the square uh, drawn, then we calculate area. So area equal L multiplied W. See, see, it is on the same level as the square, so in, indented to the right. Yeah, if we have it on the same level as depth, it will not find the value for L and W because, again, this is something we need to start thinking of it is the scope of our data, uh, our variables means where those variables are accessible. Are they accessible if they were? And we'll get into that in more details in next videos. Uh, no. So this one created the area, L multiply W. Then you see the keyword return. That keyword return is the one that will send back the result to the caller function or to the user or to the, to the caller function. Now, the last line, is we have is print, okay? We're printing the results. By printing the result, by calling the function rectangular, uh, supplying 50 and 100, now it will go to the function, it will draw the function, it will calculate the area, and it will return to us a value for area which will be displayed on the screen. We'll see it in the live code when we come to the live uh, code. Now you've seen uh, how we create functions, how we name functions, what are the four types of, of functions. We have seen examples of how we're using that. Let's get into the live code and do that. And then you need to come back and do those exercises, which will help you practice and learn more. Programming requires more practice, and with more practice, you will be able to do uh, amazing stuff.